straight ahead on Virginia Outdoor Life. They say a dog is a man's best friend. That's definitely the case with this deer hunter. Plus, meet a man who's made a lifetime of lures. And we'll show you how to get the most out of your outdoor photos. All this and more next on Virginia Outdoor Life. Welcome to Virginia Outdoor Life. Once again, it is Saturday, December the 30th. We are so glad to have you with us. We hope you had a fantastic Christmas. I know I did, uh, Eric, down in Arkansas. How about yours? I had a very good Christmas because I was a very good boy, and Santa was kind to me. Well, I concur with that. I do, know? too. Yeah. I do, too. You know, you're, you're, uh, you're cut up out here a lot of times, but, you know, <laughs> over, overall, you know, pr pretty, pretty decent fellow. I, I was a very good boy, you and know, Santa was good to You me. know, I was thinking, coming back on the plane, I'm running out of time to bag the big one this year. Yes, you are. Uh, got a, uh, just about, <laughs> about a week, a week ago, as a, matter of, <laughs> as a matter of fact. But if you saw our show last week, you saw a little bit about the history of the Manry Hunt Club out in Cortland. It is a super place, one of the best hunting clubs in the state, and we had a great time learning about it. Now this week, we're going to show you the hunt. One of the great things about Manry, the hunting dogs. Bill Pittman, one of the trainers out there, and he takes great pride in doing this. So let's take you back out to Cortland, where a dog's life couldn't be finer. This is just a pleasure of turning a dog loose and hearing him run. Killing the deer is, 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 is just mine or just icing on the cake. The satisfaction of raising a puppy, seeing him run a deer, is just like raising a child. They hear that dog, open up in there. If he starts running hard enough, they're gonna go there and help him. Hopefully we're in the right spot. And triple out buckshot, that ought to knock him down. She is moving. She is flying. Look at her just fly through the air. Woo! She was flying across that field. Man, I've never seen anything like that. That big pack of dogs right then. Yeah, they, they just, they come out of this woods over here, Bill. They chased her up and then she kind of turned and just, she, she went right in there and they're they right on her. It's probably about five dogs. Well, that was as close as we got to anything other than a cow, but one Manry Club member <laughs> across the way <laughs> had four deer escape <laughs> right Jackson in front of him. Typical, uh, rookie deer you couldn't blame it on the dogs though. Time? As Boy, usual, they did their job. Well, that's another thing. You don't brag about it. You start bragging, he'll do the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is fun just to get out there and see the dogs run. Yes, Occasionally you get close to a deer. But, you know, you, you hear a lot about people saying, you know, it's, it's more the fellowship and all this. Well, I've had plenty of fellowship. Fellowship, you're right. Full up of fellowship. You ever try to cook fellowship? <laughs> it don't fry yeah. up worth a darn. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, you know. I guess it's just a Virginia Outdoor Life jinx every time I go out, you know. I know. Uh, I catch fish when yeah. I go. You do, don't you? God, I, <laughs> I didn't even catch a fish when I went out, man. What's, what's going on here? Dog's oh, gone. We got to get Oh, to you'll the... get it. You'll get it. All right. You want to okay. feel real bad. I just talked to a friend on the Eastern Shore, and uh, another friend of mine was over there with his buddy that killed four deer on muzzleloader. Each one of them got a buck. And, with a muzzleloader? Well, each shot. one got a buck. No, 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 no. They each got two deer. They got a, yeah, each got a buck and each got a doe. Not with one shot, no. Well, oh, one shot at a time. That's yeah. right. With yeah. a muzzle loader, that's, yep, that's yep, all yep. you got. That's it. Okay, time to take a look at what is making news this week. There's a meeting coming up January 11th. The uh, South Atlantic Fishery Management Council holding a public hearing January 11th at 7 p.m. at Lake Wright. The hearing uh, to help decide the harvesting of king mackerel, Atlantic king mackerel, cobia, and dolphin. Captain, tell us what's going on here. Well, it's... Uh, this is what's going on. It's, it's more than I can it's even hope to remember. Eat. There's uh, about 12 or 15 different subjects that are going to be covered at this hearing, and it has to do basically 
as far as our recreational fishermen are concerned with Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, and cobia, and some new regulations that are, be gonna, are going to be coming out concerning those fish. Um, and, and really, recreational fishermen, as always, need to be present to make themselves heard as to how they feel about these regulations without going into a lot of detail. They will be explained prior to the, uh, to the public comment. They'll, the uh, people from the uh, council will go over what the new uh, proposed plans are, and then it'll give the, uh, the audience a, a chance to comment on them. But, yeah, as always, we need to see a good turnout of recreational fishermen. That's right, and we can always count on you to be there, but you can't be the only one. No, no. I, well, I, I go now. I just try to cover it as a news thing rather than right. speaking, unless it's striped bass. But uh, other than that, I'll just, you yeah. know, well, let somebody else do it for yeah. a while. I've done it for a long yeah. time. We'll let you do your speaking out there here. There you go. You're never afraid to uh, let oh, us no, know no, your no, opinion. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, stick around. More of the captain's opinions and more Virginia <laughs> outdoor life to come. Did you ever wonder how they make those lures you use to catch those big fish? Well, we went to the factory to find out. We'll tell you about that right after this. Hey, glad to have you back again for the final show of 1995. Gosh, Eric, remember it was back in October of 95. Yep. That, that we started this yes, thing. Yes, that's right. October, what, the 5th or the 9th or something? Yeah. Yep, yep, Gosh, yep. it's been fun, hasn't it? I'm telling you, it's been great. Well, it I really has. We got some uh, some good momentum heading yes. off in, into uh, 1996. We'll have 52 new shows to do. Absolutely. That's right. We make them fresh for you here. Every week. That's right. When the order comes Time in. Time to make the show yeah. instead of the donuts. That's right. <laughs> you got it. We get out there and do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you've ever stopped to ponder where the lures you fish with come from, but if you haven't, we have. Now, <laughs> if you fish with Hopkins lures, they come from uh, downtown Norfolk. Now, uh, Eric, you recently spent uh, the day at Hopkins uh, Fishing Lures Company Incorporated. Yes, I did. Yes, yeah. I did. Uh, we went over there and um, spoke with the folks that make the lures, and it's a family-owned and operated business, and they've been making these lures for over 50 years. It used to be very simple. They, uh, you just carded things and the lures on a card, you know, and it's developed from that to skin packing and then to bissa packing, and uh, now you, we do just the blister packing and the, uh, and the skin packing. This starts out in coil and uh, they, they run it through a straightener, cut off a piece this length. It goes into uh, an 800 ton press and this is the first step here. You wind up with two parts. The second step, they've done the piercing of the holes right. and the third step is they they trim it, trunk punch it out, and you wind up with two parts like this. That's been polished. It's been polished in a way. It's still going to be electro polished, and we have to send them away to get that done to get the thing uh, to turn out. That's the polished one there. Oh, see? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. These are uh, two ounce lures he's putting together, and uh, he's already put the rings on them, so he's putting those bucktails on now. Uh, in salt water, we use a lot of, of treble bucktails. And we're using stainless rings, and uh, they tend to take a bit of a, a spring to them. They're not like carbon steel, so he has to close them after he puts them on. They're put on racks, and then they go over to the packaging operation. We package two ways here. We either skin pack and we have a couple of machines. Actually, we're using the older one. Basically, uh, skin pack, you put film over the whole thing and the part, it provides the mold. This is blister packing and it's a thing you run into every day right. with products you buy. You have a, a preformed blister as opposed to the other thing where the part makes the, and then you drop, she'll show you, you drop the part in the blister and index the card over it. See now, she's got it all indexed and you push it in, bam, that operation's over with and in a heartbeat, it's yeah. done. Yeah. We've got, we re really have four basic series, which you're familiar with. It's a no equal, a shorty, right. and we have, uh, what we call our smoothie series, and it sells way more in, in fresh water than in salt. I never expected to be here this long, that's for sure. Basic lures has a lot to do with it. That's the reason I keep on with it. That's right, and it gives you a reason to get up every morning. Yeah, yeah it does that. Because you got a place to go. Yeah, you have something to do. That's right. Something that's, that's right. expected of you. 
95 years old. 95 years old. Looking great. Her husband passed away about the time that the uh, Hopkins Company began to take off, and she stepped in and took it over and has been running it. He passed away in the 50s, and she's been running it ever since. By her, you know, as the head of the company, she is the president of the company, chief operating officer, CEO, whatever you want to and say. a thriving company. Absolutely. You, you and know, getting better every yeah. year and expanding their markets all the time. Yeah, just in the three months that we've been doing this show, Eric, I'm so impressed with uh, the how much this area generates just into the, the fishing oh, industry. Sure. Yeah. You know? yeah, and we've still got other companies in this area to go see uh, uh, that make other types of lures, and, and they're right here in this area. But this company originated here. Her husband, Mr. Hopkins, and uh, the gentleman, uh, uh, Claude Rogers, who was mm -hmm. at one time in charge of the Virginia Saltwater Fishing Tournament, uh, was one of the people that worked with uh, Mr. Hopkins to, to develop the lure, and he they, they originally sat in their workshop and hammered those little <laughs> That's awesome. stainless steel, and they hammered them. Uh, you That's know, great. you got one of them right. Well, here. this is a hammered spoon. Yeah, you can see the if you can see, uh, they've it's got these little indentations here, which is what makes it a hammered spoon. And then of course the ones they showed you on the um, uh, the uh, piece there, where the uh, the shorty and the no equal and the smoothie, which are a different type. But they're basically designed to be used uh, for surf fishing, except for this one. This one is a troll. This is the one Jimmy Cobb used to catch at least two of his citations. Wow. And unless somebody catches an awful lot of fish tomorrow, uh, he will be the uh, angler of the year this year. So it's a, it's a really good That's spoon. It works really hey, well. Hey, real quick, how's he doing? Oh, he's doing good. Good. Yeah, he's good. doing good. I know he was sick for a while. He had a couple of heart attacks, but uh, he's back in business. Great. All right, yeah. Jimmy. Good. Our best to you, buddy. Hey, it's time now to open up the outdoor scrapbook. We've seen Mr. Cobb on here a, a few dozen <laughs> times already this year. But well, we're going to go back to you now, showing off the pictures that you guys have sent in to us. And here we go. Keith Harver, who is the Lieutenant Game Warden in King and Queen County, shows off his Thanksgiving dinner. He bagged a big bird near Ivor. Next is Mark Wood and David Pierce, who hunted the Wood Hunt Club in Suffolk. Mark has a six-point buck taken November 4th. Dave, a nice ten-pointer taken November 25th. Jeff Sims of Washington has a 20-pound drum caught at Cape Point in North Carolina last month. He caught it using cut mullet. And here's an unusual one. It's a ribbon fish caught by seven-year-old Vincent Radoms, also at Cape Point. And my good buddy David Simmons from the Manry Hunt Club in Cortland has a 14-point buck he bagged a couple of weeks ago. It weighed in at 156 pounds. Roy Custis of Painter, Virginia has a couple of really nice pictures. One is of him fishing at sunset. In the other, he is showing off a speckled trout. Roy said in his letter, let's all take care of the bay. There's only one, and that's something we all need to remember. And finally, it's our old pal Danny Davis again of Portsmouth showing off a 13-pound striper he caught aboard the vessel Gemini. Keep... Hey, you know, every week we show you the pictures from the great outdoors in our outdoor scrapbook. Well, this week, we're going to help you make those pictures look even better, or we're going to try anyway, Eric. <laughs> that's right, that's yeah. right. Make them look a little bit better anyhow. Yeah. Uh, he shared some of his, uh, Bill Lane, an outdoor photographer, shared some of his tips and that should help beginners, experienced photographers, and everybody in between. Just watch this. Okay, we're here this uh, early morning. It's a little brisk out here. We're at Falls uh, Cape State Park. Bill Lane, professional photographer, has been conducting a uh, weekend seminar uh, workshop on outdoor photography, and we've kind of corralled him here for a few minutes to talk about outdoor photography, and perhaps some of you folks would be interested in getting into this and doing some photography. A lot of outdoor photography um, the camera gear that we use um, is very basic. Um, a lot of people go from manual focus cameras to autofocus cameras. Uh, it's not a tool that will get rid of all the problems. It's still, the autofocus is still something that you need to plan on. It's not a, a tool that where you can just throw up your camera and spot on your flying bird and get an acceptable picture. You still need to plan. Now, getting into lenses, for birds and for out, stuff like that, you need a, a, a fixed focal length. This is a 400 here that's not autofocus. And you were just saying inside, you think 500 is a minimum for bird photography. Um, I've seen people use both. Uh, I know a lot of good professional photographers that started out with 400 uh, millimeter lenses, mainly because 
we didn't have a 500 and the next lens to use was a 600. One thing that's very important about these lenses is to purchase one <clears throat> that is that lets you let in a lot of light. In other words, um, a 400 f4 would let in more light than a 400 5.6. And the more light you let into your camera, the faster shutter speed you can use for a moving subject, which is, which is also very important. The real importance of a tripod, it takes the uh, one situation um, that's always a problem um, of you being able to hold the camera steady. It is next to impossible for you to hold the camera steady in your hands 100% of the time. Now the faster the shutter speed, the more likelihood that you're going to get a sharp image um, with your camera. Getting the proper equipment um, to start with, you really need to do some homework. Find a, a good nature photographer that can lead you in the right direction to help you buy some of the right equipment. Oh, thanks, Bill, for those tips. That's great. You know, I want to encourage our viewers to send in, if you've got any shots of wildlife out in the wild, we would love to see some of your birds and just wildlife shots out there. That's you know, true. I know <clears throat> a guy, um, John Adams here, he, uh, a fellow that works on the crew here, has been bragging about uh, all his uh, pictures. He, I hadn't seen him yet. Yeah. But uh, John's been telling us, and, you know, I'd just like to encourage you, John, back there, pal. Um, <laughs> bring it on, buddy. <laughs> hey, Bill. Now, earlier in the show, we took a trip out to the Hopkins Lure Factory. Well, the folks at Hopkins have been kind enough to give us some lures to show off during the hot product segment. And, Eric, you got three got of them here. Why don't you tell us about them? Well, well, I just well, kind of, uh, you know, mix them up the here and everything. The hammered spoons, okay, and we'll uh, they're in the, uh, the way. original right. silver, the new gold, which should be deadly on, uh, on the... Um, um, red okay. drum and a red and white one that's good for anything. Okay, here we go. For the Hopkins Lures. Hopkins Lures, the here winner is. Here, I'll go and let you fit. Dum, 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 dum. I get to draw again. And the winner is. I got two of them here. I'm trying to get this Just pick one. Just one. Tina White. All right. Of Claremore, Virginia. Tina, thanks for writing in. And uh, do we have that hot product address you can uh, stick up there on the screen for them to write into? Uh, if you want to, well, anyway. draw another one. Okay, yep. Well, we got the, yeah, we got RV tickets to give away yep. too. There, there we go, right there. That's the uh, RV okay, show. Get the draw again. And uh, uh, for the RV show, two tickets to the RV show. That's a fantastic show, by the way. I'm going to say Michael Goldsbury. Yeah, and I'm going to say Michael Goldsbury because he's got it on here. Tickets. All right. And the we've got everything organized. Yep. Okay. We're in good cool. Shape. Now's the time when you tell us uh, what about those um uh, big. Uh, blue, you want one of them yeah, bad, don't fans. you? I want yeah. you to get one real right. bad. Okay. I really do. <clears throat> when the wind quits blowing, uh, they should be there. They should be okay. at Hatteras once the wind quits blowing. And the, they're there now, but who, who could ever know because it can't get out. Right. Uh, once the wind lays down and uh, we start to see uh, some uh, more subtle weather, uh, you're going to see some giant bluefin tunas at Hatteras, some yellowfins out of uh, Oregon Inlet. And, uh, but what, I think what about the, the ducks? What about the ducks? Well, ducks are supposed to be up well, big populations. You couldn't tell it by our duck hunting, but that's what let's it's supposed get to be. Okay. Folks, we we'll see you. That. We're out of here. Bye-bye. We'll <laughs> see you all next week. Okay. Happy New Year, by the way. All right.